Welcome back. We are playing the Daily Rapid Arena on LeeShogi.org. So the way this format works, um, players are just paired as whenever players are available. As long as there's enough players or spectators in the lobby, pairings do occur. It occurs to me as I mouse over the lower left corner, you might not be able to see that. Well, it kind of shows. I've got a user script that colorizes usernames, just if that makes that more or less confusing. But yeah, if folks are lined up in the lobby, Lee Shogi randomly assigns, well, not randomly, it just assigns pairings based on who's ready for a game. Good luck. Alright, I'm playing as Senta, I go first. I am playing in Zen mode, so we can't actually see who it is, who my opponent is here. We can just speculate as to who it might be. Um, either way, we're going to have some fun and maybe learn some things along the way. I do enjoy playing third file Rook, so let's play third file Rook. Um, also, I forgot to wish my opponent good luck, but always, as always, I do wish them good luck. Whether that be in English or in Japanese, they celebrate the beginning of a game saying, Onegaishimasu, which is a, it's a wishing, it's a greeting and a wishing of well intention. Okay. Uh, is our opponent, they're playing the thing. Why are they playing the thing? Do they not know how risky the thing is? All right, let's have some fun. They're seriously considering castling into the corner, so I prematurely launch an attack, and we're going to have some fun. That's the conclusion here. So I'm threatening this over here twice. This is intended to, well, normally a threat that this could be a threat would heavily discourage an opponent from trying to dive into the corner. But since I see my opponent is clearly diving into this, um, I make all haste to try to prevent it, as I don't particularly care for that strategy. Uh, let me check. Do we have a proverb here? We do have a proverb, and it says, To take the side pawn is to grasp the nettle. I'm not sure exactly what that refers to, to be honest. Oh my goodness. Uh, that is exciting. Um, so if I exchange, then this gold is hanging over here. This pawn is loose. So I could redrop the rook and do the same thing. To quote, uh, what's his name, Hades from Hercules, is there a downside to this? Um, I don't see a downside to this for me. Let's give it a shot. How bad could it be? All right. We have the same fork, but now with another hanging piece. I mean, arguably they could keep advancing pieces over this way, but this makes more and more holes for another piece to drop, and I don't know they fully prepared for that. So this is attacked. I'm still trying to ward off this idea. Um, 
but yeah. And potentially something like this could happen. So these are our ideas here. I've done this without having fully protected my king, but yeah, I think this is bothersome. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Now, if one rook does some good, how much rook does this? All right, we're taking this. In the opening, a bishop is excellent, and a rook's fine, but bishops are quite nice in the opening. So, as far as I'm concerned, I've snatched a pawn and I may be threatening to drop a pawn here, and then take all these pieces. Separately, if they continue trying to dive into the corner, I'm just going to play increasingly aggressive moves until they do something to respond to what I'm doing. Um, also, of some note, if I get a bishop and a pawn, you can guess what I might try to do. Um, my initial guess was that I was going to try to drop the pawn and then the bishop, but then the rook can block. So rather, I would have to drop the bishop first and then the pawn. Then if they hit the bishop, maybe it retreats, or maybe I just take all the pieces. But yeah, if you can get the king into the corner, that can be a safe shape if you can get the king into the corner. That's the nuance. If you can't get it there, it's a different situation. So if they take here, okay, I take back. If they drop a rook, I can drop a bishop. Um, and so I have a bishop battery approaching. Well, actually, I could drop the bishop here, too. They block, and then I drop my pawn here. And that could be complicated. That could be actually really complicated. So... I've got one idea here, another idea there. Might have other ideas with additional pawn. Well, no, because they're hitting this. Hmm. Not sure about this idea. Could also consider just taking a lance, letting these pieces exchange, and letting the hell break loose. But that did not occur. All right, so this is an idea. This is another idea. I don't particularly want a rook for a bishop, but a rook for a pawn sounds nice. If I check, they block the rook. I drop a pawn. One of the rooks takes... Okay, that's not super great. Um, I could also move this up sidestep half of their ideas. Or retreat the bishop, even. I'm just not sure if a retreat's warranted here. But my bishop floating is a bit dangerous. Um... If I retreat my bishop, they could push one of these pawns to give the rook somewhere to go. Uh, and then I drop the pawn. Well, if they push this, this also... Like, if I pawn drop, then they can take this, and I don't have a fork. 
Um, I could also move the knight out. Then they might hit my bishop. I might continue approaching or I might retreat. If I move the knight, they have another place to drop a rook. But then I can move this up, and then they take this. And I drop a pawn. No, I drop the bishop first and then a pawn. Um, what a mess. Also, they have a pawn, so any of these combinations, if I check, they might just be able to drop here, and I don't. Well, then I could take this and take that. It's fine. Actually, there's their king loose. If I drop here, they drop a pawn, I take the silver, I take here next. I don't have a mate. It would be nice to have a mate, but I don't have one. If I retreat... They move the silver up again. Now they move this. If I go to 5-5, five, five, is my square to retreat to? I know I didn't want this exchange. Um, but maybe I need to, to consider it anyway. 5-5, five, five, silver 3-3 three, three takes... I take one of my bishops... I guess gold takes to prevent me from taking here. And then this retreats somewhere. Hmm. Or rather, if I do 5-5, five, five, they can do gold over. I take gold takes again. I don't have another bishop in hand. Um... Hmm. It'd be nice to have one more bishop in hand. <laughs> knight up, attack, knight, take, 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 no. Um. Hmm. This being loose is kind of a problem. Bishop back, silver out. Now, bishop back, pawn up. Um, yeah, I guess I profit one pawn from this entire mess. Because I can't figure out if I am winning a pawn somewhere or winning heavier material, I'm just not seeing it. But the current idea is a bishop drop here and a pawn drop there. Um, so, oh, but now I've lined up my bishops with this pawn, so they take two bishops in a row while I'm taking all the pieces. It's bishop, pawn, pawn, or bishop retreats, rook retreats. Um, bishop moves to hit the rook. And it continues breaking their shape, but it's not perfect. Um... Hmm... Oh, I have another idea. Let's try my last idea here. This is check. So yes, my bishops are aligned, and theoretically, once they move this, it could take both bishops in sequence, if both bishops are still here. That's the if. Um, So if, now if they push this, however, I expected them to drop a pawn here. Um, but yeah, this wins a pawn with check, which will take the game. Thanks for the game. Because they have too many things hanging at once. 
Oh, I need to go back one, reinvoke Zen mode if possible. I don't know if I can get back into Zen mode, or it's probably going to show me my next opponent because I forgot to reactivate Zen mode before going back to the tournament. But I'm not sure if I could have gone back and done that anyway. Um, yeah, that was an exciting game. So Killer Ducky started the tournament before I joined it. He's currently in the lead. He's in the midst of playing this game here. And so I can wait here in the lobby, or I could watch his game uh, on the large board. But we're just going to hang out and watch from the lobby, which will give us a perspective as to... I mean, I could open a second browser tab. That might confuse us. Should we try it? Let's try it. Open link in new tab. All right, so now we can see the game board nice and large. True enough, I don't have a way to toggle on or off Zen mode from here. Um, all right, I'm going to invoke Lee Shogi in a new browser window. And then from the new browser window, go to my preferences and go enable Zen mode wherever it's at. Zen mode is hidden some... Well, it's under game display. Zen mode, yes. Okay. So Zen mode is active. If I refresh the game page... Oh, this isn't a TV page. That's why. So if I were to click on this TV, I have a special user style that hides part of the page if I'm watching a TV. Note, I am still in this lobby here, but I'm also like watching the game on a large board for our convenience. And so what's our next proverb? And the reason I'm staying in the lobby is because I believe I get faster pairings if I'm in the lobby while also on another tab. I'm watching a game or doing something. Many people on Lee Chess employ the same strategy of having one tab in the lobby at all times. And maybe at some point there will be some enhancement so you don't have to do that. It seems a bit hokey to have to have two web socket connections or whatever. One to say, oh yes, I'm definitely in the lobby, please pair me. And another like off solving puzzles or watching games or something. Seems a bit, I don't know. Perhaps there's another way to declare intention other than just hanging out in the lobby. Some way that like doesn't require double the number of web sockets, but we have web sockets to spare so far. It's not been an issue, at least not for the server. So here we are watching Killer Ducky against Airirat. Uh, this appears to be, well, I was going to say a static rook opening. Yes, no, this is definitely Snow Roof, except the silver's on 4 7 instead of on 5 7. And the Snow Roof head is gone, and the king's on the right side, but the rook's moved left. So it's. A freestyle thing. Pretty cool. And if ever we hear the website binging at us, that means that we got a pairing. Otherwise, if it's not binging, we don't have a pairing. Hopefully I don't miss a game. Oh, that looks severe. That looks severe. Um... Yeah, I guess the bishop could move to 4-2, or the gold to 4-2, maybe. Maybe that might defend against this strong sudden attack. But this looks painful. Killer Ducky ain't messing around. Alright, well, spot the move. I would do this, but maybe that's just me. 
Maybe there's better. I guess if you check back here, they're going to drop a pawn somewhere. Sure would be nice to... Well, actually, this silver is pinned here. So... Yeah, this could be strong. Oh no. I don't think that was necessary. I mean, I think it's still quite good. Um. Oh, actually, silver. <laughs> oh, that's actually really clever. I missed that. That is super clever. I was nervous about giving away an attacking piece. But there is one little detail here. Yeah, this rook is also hanging. Now, it would take balls to take here. Like, you could take the rook, but other attacking moves might be even better. Um, I don't know how much better or worse, but... Well, with this pinned, it's one matter. At this point, since the gold can move... Yeah, just take the rook. A lot of my crazy sacrifices are too crazy to be played. So, anyway, this is where we're at. Hang on. Um, while this bishop was still here, it's possible this drop check might have been stronger. The knight hitting that. But now they can choose to play things like this or that. Or they can choose to counterattack. So I would do this. Because I like to check. I guess, though, if you drop the knight there, that prevents other, other pieces from using the same square. Yeah, Senta here is trying to ask Gota, are you going to move this bishop or not? And so that remains up in the air. So actually what he did is really clever. Yeah, my earlier silver sack idea looks a bit crazy. I don't really like having chased the king. I mean, we did get a knight. I shouldn't say we're chasing the king. We actually did collect a knight. Um, yeah, so here this is possible. And perhaps forced. Yep. It's not so easy to remove. Even though there's no pawn drop on 5 1 just yet. Um, this one, I don't see how to remove it. There might be a way, but I just don't see it. On the other hand, some. Well, pawn drops would be great, except that this horse is looking to retreat here and protect the king. So we might actually see some resistance here. And this might slowly add up to be something that overwhelms. 
Yeah, I don't know. Not sure about that. Just go like there or something. So, Santa did gain a tempo with this attacking style. Um, then they exchange off their knight, and they're going to drop another knight to gain another tempo. And depending on whether Gota saves the horse, I think they should. Santa might be able to gain a lot of tempo, tempi here. That might not be easy. Okay, so you could exchange a bishop for two pieces. That wouldn't be unreasonable. Yeah. All right, Killer Ducky's got two pieces and a pawn in hand. I hope he's read this out to mate. I know I play impulsively. I'm just wishing the best for him. <laughs> As if I know what's best for him. But maybe I don't. All right. Oh no. That won't work. I know that's a fighting move, but um there's um there's a tactical problem to solve here. Okay, I thought this was gonna happen last move. Um Yeah, I thought instead of the snipe drop, I thought we we're to see something else. Okay, I mean, sure. Silver. Lance, something here. Fearless. Absolutely fearless. But maybe that's necessary to be a great player. Okay, well then. Um, yep. That's one check. That's another check. I mean, Killer Ducky's got this in hand at this point. It would be... I don't see a way for Gota to recover. Senta's got this, yeah. All right, back to the tournament lobby we go. As we wait our next opponent. It's going to be somebody who hasn't paused. Killer Ducky leads the tournament, eight to two to two. Um, my previous game, I had a victory, I believe, over McCall. So that I'm not going to get. I'm probably not getting paired again with McCall in the short term. Our other lobby spectator has paused. And another player has paused, so it's really a question of... Uh, I could get one of two opponents here. Or actually, one of three. 
It's whoever is in the lobby that's not paused, that's also not my previous opponent. Those are the players that I could potentially be paired against. And if you have a really small pairing pool, then, or it's a really small player pool for the tournament, um, in that case, um, you might be sitting here waiting for a pairing for a bit. Um, yeah, Killer Ducky's on a roll. The funny thing is, though, supposing he rejoins the lobby, supposing we get paired and I do beat him, I'm still quite far behind points-wise. And uh, player-wise, it might not be possible to catch up. I might have to be sated. All right, good luck. I play a Senta. We're going to play this. Okay, let's continue. Interesting. Um, hmm. Every other time I chicken out. Let's do this. Okay, they do close the diagonal. Let's bring my king to safety. Continue putting my king to safety. Push on the edge to encourage them to do the same. They don't do the same. All right. Well, go down the same path as we went down the first game. Is that an option? It feels like an option. Let's try it. How many times can I get away with this? Giko reminds me that this pawn advance actually isn't anything. It just looks extremely scary if you haven't studied it. But I don't actually remember how it goes. And I am somewhat threatening to do this and then take here. Um, okay. <sighs> what do we do next? All right, screw it. We're going to let them bury their king in the corner. And I'm going to pretend to be happy about it, even though neither one of us wants to play this, but okay. Um... Yeah, king in the corner, or anaguma, bear in the hole, whatever you call it. Strategy where you lift the lance and stick the king behind it. It's challenging for both players. Oh! Oh, we might have a unique strategy here. Thank goodness. Um... That said, pawn takes, silver takes, pawn drops, silver up, pawn up. Like, what do they do? This is some tricky something or other. Also, if I bring the bishop out and sack it here, I'm not sure that they survive. This bishop out. They do something. I take, 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 take. A bishop out, rook over, takes, takes. Bishop takes. I don't know, man. This looks weird. Bishop out, pawn up. Um, pawn takes. They take my bishop. I take the rook. They take my lance. I promote. I don't get it. 
I'm not being ironic. I just don't understand. Wait, right. tanks, 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 tanks. I have a pawn and a silver. If I drop the pawn, the rook retreats somewhere. If I drop the silver, rook retreats anyway. Um, oh, hang on. There's an easier answer here. Pawn takes, silver takes. Bishop, the rook goes here to save the silver, pawn drop, silver up, bishop takes, silver, or pawn takes, silver drop, knight takes, pawn takes, rook over, and I still don't win the rook. There is a trap here. There's definitely a trap here. And they've already fallen into it, and I'm trying to read it out, because... I'm pretty confident I'm winning a piece. I just don't see how. Um, it's maddening. Bishop, pawn, Takes, takes, takes. Pawn, silver, bishop, either. Oh, they push the pawn. Pawn, pawn, no. We lead with the bishop then. Alright, this has got to be right. Mm-hmm. This has to be correct. They have a pawn. Um... This looks so strong. Bishop can't defend easily, so I've cut off both of their bishops with one piece. Mm -hmm. So this is super weak now.
This is also weak. This is also weak. This is also weak. Um. All right, let's hit the weakness. Or maybe this one, I don't know. Really depends where this bishop ends up. Okay, I guess we'll take a bishop. Ah, oh, that does trap my knight. How observant. Um... Okay. What's going to defend this? Okay, got two pieces attacking a bishop. Let's defend my things and continue attacking. I guess I'm not really selling the continuing attacking, I think. idea. Time pressure is going to be an issue this game. Hmm. All right, so I trap their rook. Okay, let's remove this bishop. Attack.
could take that. Thanks for the game. Oh, the 3D pieces. Uh, yeah, we could give those a shot, sure. I have tried them, um, but I should try them again. Let's see, so the 3D piece set. That's this one, right? Yeah, it's a lovely set. Um, yeah, maybe I should give more thought to the post-game analysis instead of just diving out of it. Uh, I've played so many Lee Chess arenas that maybe I'm a bit anxious to just get back and play the next round. Uh, but no, that was a good game. We could, by all means, uh, we could let him... If we could conclude the tournament here, that would be a perfectly fine outcome. He still wins the tournament. We still played a great game. Um... Yeah, that was exciting. There was a lot to look at that game. And probably I will submit that one on Sunday. If I mean, we potentially might both submit it. It was a really interesting game. Um, I don't have really good audio equipment to do a call and review the game over the call. Because I don't have a headset, so like you would get an echo if we were to do such a like uh, review of the game together. But maybe sometime I'll get that all sorted out. Um, in the interim, yeah, wow. I played a really sharp game there. Spent my time thinking about um, quite a few variations. In the event that we do end up playing another game, what's our next proverb? Oh, sorry. How do I do conference calls for work if I lack a headset? So for work, we use a software product that instead of having multiple live streams and multiple platforms that you're all integrating together, we do just use one video conferencing platform and their echo hasn't been an issue there the way it's been for each time I've tried to do calls. Oh, good luck. Each time I've tried to do calls uh, and post game analysis together with Twitch, it's been kind of a mess and been a lag and somehow with our a professional conferencing tool it's just not as much of a concern i don't know exactly all the details but somehow it just works better um i don't recall if i can push my pawn in this circumstance let's do it mm -hmm. then they push here again all right and then Am I getting my Senta and Gota lines mixed up? Maybe. Um, well, let's play fourth file rook since I'm a bit pensive about playing third file in this circumstance. Alright, now they do block the line to this bishop. So I can spend one tempo getting my king slightly safer. I could take here, which, well, we don't need to go there. Uh, let's push here to see if they'll push back. This is a bit aggressive. Um, but since they're playing like the fortress destroyer shape, or they might be aiming for that. Um, they've spent one tempo on something that isn't uh, bringing the silver directly to try to break the shape up. So I can spend one tempo on this. Um, okay, now I'm going to defend this point. And likewise, they play a reasonable defensive move. Do I move the king once more, or is that premature in this wacky situation where they're threatening to push this? Um, hmm. Ah, hmm. uh, goodness. 
I don't know all these lines. It would be good to know them better. We're going to try this. This might be too much. Typically, I close this diagonal and whip out. Today, I'm feeling speculative. All right. On account of that, I um, think this is fine. Either this is fine or I'm completely lost. Let's find out. Um, but here they have spent Tempe moving the king to protect this bishop. So tricks that try to win a silver and exchange everything aren't present. Um, there's just so many variations to remember. But here if the rook does withdraw, then I can drop a pawn on this line somewhere. Or exchange bishops and bring the knight out and try something else. But my own rook is blocked. I've not yet pushed my rook pawn. Or rather, the pawn that's in front of my rook presently. Some people consider the pawn on this file 2 or 8 to be the rook pawn. But... Um, all right, so I would like to move my silver up the board. To move my silver up the board, stuff's got to change here. Uh, I could drop a pawn to block this rook. And honestly, that might be the best thing to do here. It would be great to put drop the pawn higher up on the file, but I don't think that's available here. Likewise, pushing this pawn, they drop a pawn, and suddenly I'm short on squares to go to. Um, oh, I could complete my castle. They drop a pawn, we exchange stuff, and they still... They're close to having an initiative, but not quite there. Let's complete my castle. I think I'm safe to do this. Right. So this threatens to advance here. Um, so I think here... This is called for. And then if I can stop this pawn from advancing, I'm doing fine. If I can stop it. That's the caveat. Um, but I can move my silver up, and that defends the square. That's the whole idea. So, potentially I've missed some enormous tactic here. Also, potentially, I'm doing just fine and have actually read this out properly. There's no way to know other than to play this and see how it goes. Unless you, like, actually know this or can read it out. But I don't know it. We're learning. I kind of sort of know it, but not completely. But, uh, yep. That's fair. Um, that's also really, really sharp. So, for the opponent's sake, we hope they got... <laughs> I don't know, man. I could push this? No, not really. I could defend the square again, which doesn't do much. I could take the bishop twice, drop a bishop, they take my knight, drop another bishop, I'm hitting this with a battery. I could also drop a pawn here. That's interesting. Um, yeah, let's... Let's try this. This looks accurate. So once I take that, I can drop a bishop, and that forks the rook and the square where the bishop's currently at. Or rather, once they take, we can take here. Or if they change up the move order, there's other stuff. Um, gold takes, pawn takes, bishop drop. Gold 
Pontix, Pontix, they get a gold. The gold can't hit my rook directly. And I drop here and I'm attacking a rook. The rook moves and then I take this again. Okay. So what have I overlooked here? I guess I missed this gold drop. This is checkers, man. Look at this. Gold drop, take, take, take. This is totally checkers. That's nuts. Um, also, I could drop another bishop somewhere. Or just simply back off my rook and not go into this checkers variation. Like, this is maybe an idea. But the whole checkers thing is kind of exciting. So yeah, if I had taken with the silver, at this point they'd be able to do pawn takes gold. And then I would take and they'd take and... I mean, maybe I'm still better there. But this looked way more forcing. Here, for them to attack faster, they have to drop a gold general. And I don't know that they get a huge speed boost from that. Because if I take, they take my gold, I, or they take my rook, I take this gold general. I'm threatening this immediately. But only with one piece. If I take the gold first and then I take this, that's also not decisive. But I think decisive is I just move the rook away. They got three pieces attacking the square. But they're not going to take it. Um, so if they're not taking the silver, what are they doing? And if they are taking the silver, I get a rook. And I'm threatening a gold. Admittedly, the gold can help protect the king, and it's better than outright loss of material. All right. The, the, if you're trying to save the rook, that might not be the right square. Um, all right, what's the next move? Look at that. That's kind of an issue. Um, this went far further than I imagined it would go. Uh, how do I... I mean, this attack is so dominant. I didn't even read it out to mate, but... Um, like, I've got two horses next to the king, and I could take a silver. I could also just take this pawn. Um... And then they do something to resist my horses. Oh, man. Shogi's hard. Maybe that's what makes it so beautiful. At least part of what makes it so beautiful. All right, do I seriously not have a mate here? I'm just going to take this. All right, they do put up some resistance. Hmm. 
All right, I save my piece. So I drop a knight here. If I'm dropping a knight, I'm threatening mate in one, which uh, there surely must be more than one way to avoid. Um, yeah, let's do it. I don't see anything more decisive. So they can defend the square with the silver, and they do. Um, and then I can take this promoted pawn. So at least my silver is not hanging, and I've defended almost everything here. Um... Guess let's attack here because my knight's hanging. The gold's playing around. We have some time to do some playing of our own. I guess absent something clever, I might be threatening to drop a silver here. Yeah, that's modestly clever. Um, maybe I drop here instead. Maybe my pawn drop was ridiculous. Wouldn't be the first time I've played silly moves. Um. Oh, right, I can't do that. Fine, I'll take the lance. You've persuaded me. Maybe I should, I don't know. Lots of ideas. It's not always so clear what to do. Hmm. Oh, promoting might not be right. Ironically, um, I 
All right, that looks nice. You can always put a lance behind it and then drop a silver in front of it. Oh, I guess they could move the king and drop a pawn. I might need to come up with a better idea. If the king moves, maybe a lance drop here is correct. At long last. Alright, we're playing it. It's been there a while, but I think it might finally be accurate. Um... And then, I guess, hit this again. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too anxious here. Or just not counting accurately. I'm assuming that if I take this lance in the corner, that that's a good thing. I shouldn't assume that. Also, Lance takes Pawn as an idea. Even if they defend this, I could take it and then drop another Pawn. Or I could take the Knight, even though it's not a Pawn. Alright, let's take it. Okay, I defend my silver, which shows my priorities, doesn't it? This is going to be a long game if I don't checkmate them. But I don't have the right pieces to implement an immediate mate. So I should not have dropped the silver here in the first place is the conclusion. Or rather, I just don't have the pieces. Well... I could bring back the horse. If rook takes or king takes, I could bring a horse into this somehow. Or, I'm sorry, if rook takes, I could bring back this. If they drop a silver, I just take it, but that's not mate. I'm too impatient. Okay. Alright, I am too impatient here. Yeah, I'm very much prevailing on material count, but it's taking an eternity to approach this king. They say three knights as a checkmate. What about two knights and a lance and a promoted silver and all this stuff? Where's the saying about that? I guess it's not written yet. Maybe I can write it. Hmm. Okay, finally I'm going to offer a horse for a silver when they do this. Why am I going to do that? Because this works an easy target. Alright, thanks for the game.
All right, 47 minutes remain in this arena. I seem to be running away with it. Oh, sorry. No. Uh, yeah, it's, you're not alone. Some people in the last month have also reported that the tick, tick, well, I'm playing with one sound set here, but having an actual Bioyomi counter, if we had voice talent to produce that, might be better. Um, I think my position in, at the end was better. But you're right, you still had some chances there. Good luck. Um, so, yeah, I think, though, I had such... Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, the old Byoyomi Gambit. All right, we have fourth file rook being played here. Um, sorry about emergency vehicle noises. Oh, do do do. How does all this work again? No, nope, if I push this this time. There's too many lines. How do you remember every line? Um, all right, I think this is playable. We're going to find out. Oh, you didn't believe in the bishop sack in the opening. No, I, I'm very curious about it. Um... I don't know if I believe in it or not. I play things, even not fully believing in them. Um, stuff happens when I play moves. All right, so let's close this diagonal before things get too crazy. And play my favorite. Okay, this is loose here. Um... Hmm. How nuts am I? No, I should not do this. What am I smoking? Wait, but why did they play this? Ah, my head. I don't get it, what either of us is doing here. They've very clearly laid out a defense against my attack. But also, like, what are we doing? All right, twisting rook, here we go. Yeah, for the double swinging rook middle game. Like, yeah, that's the reason you do this, is because you wanted to lose a tempo and be able to play opposing rook. But I don't like losing tempi. And, like, now they've been forced to play this anyway. This wasn't their original plan. Um, right, let's pretend this is all normal. Yes, yeah, so I've got the pawn in hand. They have defended against my nonsense, and now they're going to go swinging rook. Um. Oh, okay. So some people with their opening strategies don't have as much flexibility in what they can do. Um. All right, so I'm not putting my king on this square. See where my king is? Not this square, because we know this is what they're intending to do. So I've already saved a tempo running away from this. Um, so I have a castle, and that makes one of us. Um, oh, they do have this defended. So they've done something right here. But if it's their intention to 
I've played something not too dissimilar from Fortress Destroyer. Uh, what do we do? If I push this pawn, their silver could give chase, which would be unwise, but it's a sort of insane thing that I would try modestly approve of. All right, let's use my silver and see what they're doing. So I've now broken my silver bishop chain. Yes, yeah, so they're not playing this pawn up because they can't. Um, so... This is so weird. You know what might happen? If I play this up, this over, I might build the fortress. That I don't need to do that. It would look cool, but I very much don't. Well, I say I don't need to, but now look what they're doing. You know what? Let's do it. Opposite side fortress. Here we go. Totally legit Chogi strat. You saw it here first, folks. Opposite side fortress. Totally legit opening. <laughs> uh, oh, right fortress is good versus opposing rook. Yeah, I thought so, because, like, if it's good against Static Rook, it's got to be okay against this. So, all right. Opposing Rook was the best approach to double swinging Rook until right fortress. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, so... This is odd. If I bring this up, they can hit it. And it's uncomfortable for all of us. Um, but yeah, the point of moving the silver up would be to discourage them from preventing me from completing my fortress. Because um, the, the silver's got nowhere to go. They have nowhere to expand to. On the other hand, bring the silver up, they could move the bishop, move the knight, and still push this. But I could bring my pawn up to further my idea. Alright. Uh, silver up the board is aggressive. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. I hear pushing this edge pawn is encouraging fate. And that not pushing it somehow saves a tempo? I'm thinking about this, though. It doesn't make sense to me. Push, push, tick, 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 tick. It's like the attack is one step further removed from my king if I do push this. Um, but it's one step faster, too. And they don't have anything to reinforce this attack other than spearing the sparrow. Which they're going to do anyway. So why do I tempt fate? Because um, I don't know how else to attack this thing. That's why. It's not a good reason. Okay. So I'll just attack straight down the middle. That can't be wrong. Bishop on 7-7. Seven, seven. This guy here makes all the difference. Well, we'll see. Potentially I'm walking into something quite treacherous. Um, but like, what the hell am I supposed to do to attack this thing? Other than just pushing on this wing. 
Which is an idea, but I don't see how to do orchestrate a pawn break. I could push here, push here again, and I'm attacking for my castle to break this up. Bishop exchange, silver takes, bishop drop. Mm, I don't know. Well, no, actually, there's a lot of merit to that. Uh, that looks quite interesting. And dangerous. We do enjoy our danger. So, yeah, if they go Spearing the Sparrow, my king has a little more breathing room. Um, but also, if I push this pawn, we exchange, I drop a bishop here, eventually it promotes right in front of their king. They still haven't moved the king into the corner, nor do they have any easy way to do so. While my bishop dances back and forth and hits the rook, and then other stuff continues attacking somehow. So that's the plan. Um, might be a bit far-fetched. Okay. They defend this bishop drop concern. So maybe I slow down and start pushing this guy. I don't know. I could bring up this gold. What a mess. All right, whatever. Let's see where we go. Go wherever the winds may take us. Okay, that's a more solid fortress shape. See if they dance back. If they do, just push this edge. They just keep dancing. We're going to gradually encroach on this thing. If they do something more deliberate, I don't know. At some point, punch with this. Okay, they try to transition castles here. Um, seems like something I would try. Let's give my pieces some breathing room here. Um, so if I move the bishop over, threatening to promote, they block this somehow. They don't have a silver right now, so let's just continue advancing here. Arguably, they should push... No, they definitely should push this. It's very risky for them not to. Because um, now... I can still move the bishop out this way, but also the silver has no breathing room. Right, so... The obvious attack awaits. Um, now do I push? Pawn takes, exchange, drop. Mm, I don't know. Do not know. Hmm.
This might be misguided. Oh my. All right, we're trying this. That's not right, but I'm panicking. There's so much to panic about here. This can't be right either. I miscounted my pieces. This is so bad. I gave away my entire advantage, and I still have no idea what I'm doing. Because I don't play this every day. So we have a really awkward shape. Let's try this. Sorry. If I had more time, I would try to sort out the details. As is, I'm just playing on impulse. Which is a disaster. I had an idea. It's no good. Well, no, it's it's better than nothing. The disaster still accurately describes what's happening here, but whatever. Like I said, I don't play this every day, so like I'm hanging everything because I have no idea how to resolve all these threats in any kind of logical way. So it's all just impulse at this point. So I'm like lost hundreds of rating points being extremely confused about this position. It was a nice position. I just like, it's too much. Yeah, it's basically the recipe, right? That's how we do things around here. All right, so they get the knight. Oh, I didn't see this coming. And I'm not sure that makes sense either. You were saying sacrifice pieces and lose, right? Just making sure that's what you are saying. Or are we still going to lose? But we'll uh, lose with style somehow. Free pawn. That's 
a deal. All right. Free night. All right, sure. Why not? The hell? What is this? That's a fork. Whatever. They're going to drop this on the back rank. I don't know how I'm going to respond. It's fine. It's fine. It's just a knight. It's just a king. Who cares? Maybe I shouldn't be offering that exchange. They're going to cut this line somehow. Although maybe if they block here, I take it. I'm not going to leave my pieces hanging. Not indiscriminately, anyway. Man, this bishop is the hanging the most, so I should move it next. Hmm. I haven't decided where to move it to. Oh, this is fine, and then pawn drop there, and I take a silver. But I don't want to give them a bishop for less than a rook. I might have to, though. Well, that's annoying. Screw it. Caution to the wind. Here we go.
Thanks for the game. I don't know. There might be something intensely stressful about 15 second Byoyomi. Possibly there was an input entry error and he was trying to promote something or drop something or I don't know. That was not a perfect game by me, but we'll take it. While I might not be winning on the board, I certainly put some stress on both myself and my opponent. Yeah, that's probably a mechanical error. Yeah. That's not... They don't start the count one second early, so you don't have the time like you have on Shogi Wars. Where you might have this, like, one gap, one second buffer. Um... No, I was trying my hardest that game. I'm not trying to play exploitatively on purpose. Yes, I guess I I don't know what they were thinking, but it was a very strong attack. Definitely a lot to review that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe there should be a hot key that you could hold down to decide to promote or unpromote. Maybe a hot key to facilitate the mouse entry should be a thing. I can entirely understand why auto promotion would not be a thing, but maybe move entry could be expedited somehow, or you just need to account for the time better. Either way. Um, but yeah, this morning as I was seeing some pre-moves happen, as players are able to enter their move before having seen their opponent's move. And we saw some of that in this last game where a pre-move got entered and it helps you enter a move quickly. Um, when that happens, uh, like that's possible because... My earlier suggestion about allow or enforcing traditional rules. Um, my earlier suggestion uh, was something they decided not to go with. And actually, maybe the site's the better for that. Because now you can enter pre-moves without fear of doing an illegal move. Because illegal moves are rejected by the server. So perhaps that's for the best. Perhaps faster, easier move entry needs to be considered well. And in that same vein, maybe there needs to be a way to indicate, yes, I want to promote without having to select something with the mouse cursor. Perhaps. I'm not sure. Either way, I seem to be on a roll in this daily rapid arena. Uh, there are 17 minutes remaining, but I suspect as it's getting late in the States and later and later, I guess in the morning abroad, um, perhaps there's not as much appetite to continue the tournament. If I, th I assume that if everybody were to pause, that would cease the event. Um... I don't remember under what other conditions the event can prematurely terminate. I just know there are some conditions, but 
Um, yeah, my opponent this last game is dipping in and out of the lobby. So I can't pause unless, like, other contenders are also paused or something. I mean, I could. It's not like we're getting a pairing immediately here anyway. Um, we could try this. And maybe having paused, maybe if there aren't other folks also in the lobby, this might terminate the tournament. If it goes so many rounds without having generated a pairing. Although I haven't seen that happen on this site before. Yeah, there are three people waiting, but they're not in the lobby listed as spectators. So this tournament hasn't concluded yet. I think if enough people pause, um, then that does terminate the event. But I don't think there are enough people paused for it to actually conclude. So there are still potential pairings if people come back to the lobby. There are still meaningful pairings to be had. I think the circumstance under where the, the tournament ends is A, most of the people in the tournament have paused, and B, the free few remaining participants have all competed against each other as their most recent pairing. So I don't think that's going to hold here, because although I have played Killer Ducky already, he was not my last pairing. Likewise, there's other folks in the lobby who've played other folks, but yeah, if you some have some extremely small number of players, you can hit that condition. I don't think that's going to happen here, so we might have to wait it out. Um, yes, I seem to be the only person hanging out in the lobby here. Actually, so we see this as a 10 minute with 15 second Byoyomi event. So I think I might vamp for the next four and a half minutes. And once this hits 10 minutes, then we'll go back and look at this game. Oh, there is a classical arena going on. I see. So, like, if I go look at highlight... Yeah, we see uh, Killer Ducky and Shogi Explained are playing a game there. And Nicole's obviously taking a break. And what about YT? We don't know where they're at. But okay, that's where all the action's happening. But but my trophy! Where's my trophy? I want my trophy. I gotta wait 15 minutes for my trophy. Alright. So I'm going to attempt a post-game review, and then we'll head on over. Without even having my trophy. Sigh. Alright, so... Here's the move time graph. Uh, there's the game export. Wait. Maybe I've analyzed too many games recently, or just engine analysis, server side engine analysis might not be available. Or I'm sorry. No, I know. Enable computer analysis also enables server side computer analysis. That was the trick. And then you gotta wait and wait and wait because there aren't a million nodes all sitting at the ready to do this analysis. But yeah, this game got super confusing for me. My, obviously, my head went blank. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I did some crazy sacrifice here, because I was... This is just so bad. This was so, so, so bad. Oh, goodness. So, what the heck am I supposed to do? Original plan is to push this here. Um, and I just got super pessimistic that, like, I'm pushing part of my castle to exchange pieces while my rook is still floating. And, yeah, I just panicked. My king is not in a safe place, and I don't know what they're threatening. I could delay this by one move. I could move my king into the castle, but I thought this was even worse. Because they can spend this tempo and then, like, 
I still do this, but they might not even have to respond to it at this point. This is what happens when you don't know how to do Yosa because you don't know how to do Checkmate. Because you just don't study enough. This is what happens. You panic and it just gets much harder. Um, but yeah, if I do this, they take, I take here. Knight takes, bishop drop, rook over, bishop out. Yeah, this is what I was starting to look at. Um, but with all this bearing down over here, plus this still floating, like, this is extremely uncomfortable. Not to mention, they also have this, which just piles a fourth piece onto the fire. And, okay, yeah, maybe I have that. I don't know. Maybe I don't. How can I say? I definitely had, did not have enough time to figure this out. Um, so this is where my mind was when I played... Whatever the hell I played instead of this. Um, so server-side analysis is still running. Uh, yeah, they did this fork toward the end of the game. Things got really, really wacky. I'm not going to lie. Um, so around here... Okay, this bishop move, instead of my crazy sack, yeah, that makes sense. I just couldn't believe that my attack was fast enough if I did this, but I guess their attack is not, their attack is less than at the speed of light. And if the knight takes my silver, the knight's out of play. Whereas... Like, I've done a good job with this pawn containing the silver of the pawn, the king. If the king tried to assist, tries to escape forward, uh, the other pawn does a good job restraining it. So, I've given myself better... I've done better than I've given myself credit for in terms of containing this. Because I had the foresight to push this pawn. And this is kind of nestled in so yeah we've broken the dual gold shape i should have some confidence that if i can exchange some pieces this attack continues and their pieces continue hanging and if i take the silver then i could use the silver against that i could use the bishop it's fine i had a difficulty believing it but this horse how did i respond to that i responded rook eight eight Bishop 1-3. Yeah, rook 8 eight's super heavy. Bishop 1-3 is just as good because I could still do rook 8, eight and then follow here. Why did I drop the rook? I was thinking of bringing this gold toward their castle. Or taking here and then continuing toward the castle. But it's not necessary to pursue things that way. Um, yes, yeah, so this gives them a tempo and commits my rook to this square, although I don't think I'm ever finding a better place for the rook. Maybe it's better here sometimes. I don't know. It's still a target if it's on the board. If it's not on the board, it's not a target. I don't know. So we had an awesome position back here, apparently. If I just didn't... If I just didn't, it would have been okay. Uh, this bishop drop... That's okay. Now this bishop drop's heavy. Um... Giko, or I'm sorry, this Yanur, I think, is assisting with anal analysis here. It's no major objection to rook takes. 
No major objection to rook 3 3 either. So, wait, rook 3 1 was a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry, black. This black on the graph is where this favors my opponent. I'm reading this backwards. Okay. Because I've inverted the board as a second player on Gota. And so I need to look at the graph as if the graph is inverted. All right, so yeah, I played a series of mistakes leading to this massive advantage for them. Um, it just gets worse and worse here with a huge mistake taking the pawn, allowing them to reshield their king. Um, or I'm sorry, here the Anuera suggests actually taking the pawn, but. I didn't think this was wise, because they could drop a pawn, and I guess this confines their king too much. Like, if they move the silver, clearly I'm threatening this pawn drop again. There's some s clever nuance in this. I guess the rook's only temporarily going to be on this file. Okay, whatever. This is super sharp stuff. But I was slightly better back here. Pawn drop 3-5 is just ridiculous, and played an extreme time pressure. Because I panicked and just could not figure this out. I thought moving my king here, while it's a very typical move, I thought that would further endanger it against the likes of like this and this and this, 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 whatever. Um... But no, moving the king into the castle is safe here. Or into the fortress, so. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, why play third foul rook? It's exciting. Yeah, I'm always uncomfortable with the stuff I've played. But I got tired of playing fourth foul rook and being comfortable and dying every game. So... We take the discomfort, and we take the win. And we complain about it every single time. Just to let the audience know that I still have some kind of a soul. <laughs> but yeah, I need to use all my pieces. Alright. But no, up to this point it was a decent fight. Before I completely lost my mind. <clears throat> Interesting. <laughs> uh, hide your cats. I see. Uh, perhaps I've said too much. So, Lance 9 6, Bishop 1 3. Um, it's interesting that this evaluation shifted a little bit, and I didn't actually see engine recommendation despite this shifting basically an entire point. I would have liked to have seen... Like, I made these variations. That's not what the server-side analysis generated. So just, like, this evaluation shifted from my advantage to not my advantage when I did this outrageously stupid move. Um, but and I don't trust the in-browser analysis engine to give me something reasonable here. But yeah, it's somewhat comforting to know that I made it, what, 51 moves into a game against a stronger opponent, playing a shape that I've not played before, and I still performed decently well with it despite winning on a technicality, um, getting 51 moves into a game against such a strong opponent is an achievement. Um, yeah. All right, so let's go back to the tournament page. Two minutes remain in the tournament. I'm not trying to get another pairing, 
but I would very much like to see my little trophy and celebrate Killer Ducky's good performance as well. Is he in the midst of a game? No. He did pause, but also he's not in the middle of a game. I don't know if you can pause mid-game. Like, while you're playing, can you say, I don't want to play the next round? I'm not sure. Um... Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting discussion. Somehow, when I first heard about uh, the time off, I was quite anxious about what's this going to mean. And it is true that professionals sometimes take time off. Um... But I think, I think with, as with any business or contract or whatever, I think it's up to the parties involved to decide what it means. And so while there are typical practices, I don't know that it's urgent for a decision to be made either. Yeah. It's quite possible that things can change. All right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's refresh the page. All right, so I got confetti. Apparently, I didn't get fanfare. Other than that, which I produced. Thank you. Yeah, well played Killer Ducky, and thanks for pointing out that the Daily Rapid Arena was a thing here. And, uh, yeah, he did a really good performance here, even if I sniped him. Um, this also, by the way, my best performance on Lee Shogi, but out of a sample size of four games, it doesn't mean a whole ton. I mean, for me, it's quite an achievement, but still, statistically... Four games is not a large sample size to go with, so yeah, we still need to keep playing. We might do more of these arenas in the future. Hopefully you enjoy this sort of thing, because yeah, I hope once uh, some new features, or rather once the listing of folks who are live streaming on the website rolls out, I hope that and other stuff will attract more folks back to the site. But in, in the interim, we'll just play whenever some group of streamers or whatever gets together and says, hey, now be a fine time to do stuff. So, yeah. Fun bean, or fun times, cool beans, however you say it. Um, still have a lot to review. I think I might submit one of these games for a Sunday review. Um, to see what our community as well as our harbor master think about it. It'll be good fun. <laughs>